So this map right here is called the Gleason's map. It was created in 1892. And as you can see, there is an ice wall. They knew something we didn't know. She got me until she started talking about the ice wall. Okay, so um, what is that then? What is this? Is this not an ice wall, people? Like, this is a nice wall. I see ice and I see a wall. This video is actually very long, so I'm not gonna post the whole thing, but you get the point. There is a nice wall. Now, in the next part of this video, I'm gonna talk a little bit more about the ice wall. And this is a post from someone on Facebook that says that they actually went to Antarctica. And a disclaimer, I'm not saying what they posted is facts, but it's just very interesting. So let's check it out. I've never really believed in Jesus or the dome or the whole church thing, but I think I've seen the stuff you guys are talking about here. It's just I didn't know what it was at the time. I was in the army from 1997 to 2000. I was a helicopter mechanic and crew chief and they had volunteer tours open for guys to go there and work on the helicopters there. Only me and one other guy got accepted. The application process had a bunch of questionnaires that we had to fill out and we had to sit for a bunch of one-on-one -on -one interviews. It was mostly just a bunch of questions about what our interests and beliefs were. I was sent to McMurdo Research Station in August of 1998. When we weren't busy de-icing the aircraft and working on them, we had time to hang out with the scientists at the research station. The military unit attached to McMurdo was small and we didn't have our own separate facilities. We didn't have a PX or a media center. There was no chapel or chaplain and we didn't have our own separate mail. We had to share the same facilities with the scientists and researchers. So over time, I got to be friends with a few of them. They had two different kinds of ice that they worked on and studied. One kind of ice was the normal kind that we've all seen. Just like normal ice, it was mostly clear or sometimes white and it would melt into liquid water when it got warm. The whole area of Antarctica is covered in this kind of ice, but that wasn't their main kind of ice. The only time I ever saw them actually studying normal ice was when a film crew from National Geographic came by. The rest of the time, which is most of the time, the scientists were studying something they called sky ice. This stuff was totally different. We were never allowed to go into the laboratory areas of the station because the labs had to be kept super clean and they said it would mess up their work if they risked letting too many people in the lab. But one time, one of the researchers that I was friends with showed me a piece of sky ice. You couldn't touch the stuff with your bare hands because it was so cold. And it wasn't clear or white like normal ice, it was a solid blue. He said that's why they called it sky ice, because it was the same color as the sky. We had to wear our thick, heavy, going outside gloves to handle it. The stuff was so cold it would instantly freeze your skin if you touched it. I don't remember what temperature he said it was, but it was something like hundreds of degrees below zero. Way colder than the normal ice that was outside. He had to carry it in a metal bottle that was kind of like a thermo. He let me play with a piece of it for a while. It felt lighter than a piece of normal ice of the same size, like it wasn't very heavy at all. It almost felt like you could throw it up in the air and it would just float back down, but I didn't try that. And it was also a little flexible when I tried to bend it. It didn't break like normal ice would, and even for a small piece, you couldn't see through it. It was solid blue right from the surface. And here's the really weird part. It didn't melt into the water. When it got warm, because we had it inside, it just started to shrink. It got smaller and smaller, but my glove never got wet. And there was no water on the floor. The stuff just turned into thin air when it got warm and vaporized. He said that was the reason why they had to study it right there in Antarctica. You couldn't take sky ice back to America to study it because it was almost impossible to keep it cold enough during transit. It would always vaporize into air and you'd have nothing left when you got back to the US. He said Russian scientists had discovered the same problem when they tried to take sky ice back to Russia. So that was why they all had research stations in Antarctica. After maybe 15 minutes of handling the piece of sky ice, it was almost completely gone. Just a tiny little bit was left and my glove was dry the whole time. I'd never seen anything like it before or since. And that's unusual because I've always had an interest in scientific things. I think that's even why I got selected to go to Antarctica because a big part of the interview was about science and what I believed about things. So I really thought it was cool to see something I'd never heard of before. The whole time I was at McMurdo, I heard people talk about the wall, like that was a special place. It's pretty common to find ice walls and ice cliffs all over Antarctica. The whole place is ice, but it's all just normal, white, or clear ice. So I asked my friend where they got the sky ice from and he said it comes from the wall. I don't remember exactly how he described it, but apparently there's a huge wall of sky ice in Antarctica. He said it was hundreds of miles inland from the coast. I never got to see it myself because I was only stationed to McMurdo. I didn't get to go out on expeditions. He said it was the biggest natural structure in the world. He said that in the 1960s, the US Army had a plan to bore a tunnel into the wall, but they didn't have a boring machine that could handle super cold temperatures. 
So they had a whole testing project in Greenland where they developed ice tunnels and invented new boring machines that could operate in super cold temperatures. Like they did this whole big thing in Greenland just for practice. Hmm, who do we know that has a boring company right now? Elon Musk. Then once they had the new boring machine figured out, they brought it to the wall in Antarctica. He said that the machine bored a tunnel, I don't remember exactly, like five or 10 miles into the wall, but that they never broke through to the other side of the wall and that they still don't know how thick the wall is even to this day. And I'm probably not remembering this part correctly, but I think he said that at first, the floor of the tunnel was solid rock, but after a mile or two in, the floor was sky ice, like it was sky ice underneath after a certain point or something like that. And apparently the wall slowly built itself back up after you cut it, because after a year or so, the tunnel had shrunk smaller all According to that guy's testimony, this sky ice is what the firmament is made up of. Now this comes from the Bible, Ezekiel 126. And above the firmament that was over their heads was the likeness of a throne as the appearance of a sapphire stone. For those of you that didn't know, this is what sapphire looks like. It kind of resembles the description of the sky eyes that the guy gave us. And this sky eyes cannot be melted. They tried to drill a hole through the sky eyes wall. The hole just closed back up, meaning it was put there for a reason and we ain't a leaving. And that rhymed. Now I've been getting a lot of comments from people asking why would the government or why would anyone lie to us about the shape of the earth? So you mean to tell me that you don't feel insignificant at all by the theory that we are on a floating rock just cruising through space? It's just stupid. The globe earth theory to me is just a way of trying to disprove God. The Bible clearly states there was a firmament and I'm pretty sure if the world accepted the fact that we live in a dome we wouldn't be doing any of the bullshit that we're doing today. We would be more focused on spiritual growth and trying to get closer to source, closer to our creator. But nah, they can't have that. I want you to think this bullshit, that you can continue to work for them, be a slave for them, not question anything. Okay, you guys, so a few hours ago, I posted a video called the ice wall. Oh, don't look at my drafts. <laughs> a, few, a few hours ago, I posted a video called the ice wall, exposing the ice wall that surrounds earth and showed an ancient map that depicted Antarctica before all the ice was there. And guess what? As you can see, it says it was removed for community guideline violations. They literally removed my video, guys, like for hateful behavior. Do you see that? It says it was removed for hateful behavior. What is hateful about trying to let the world know what's really going on? I said nothing hateful whatsoever. Look at this. So now I'm just gonna repost that video on my Instagram, which is in my TikTok bio, and you guys can watch it there so you can find out the truth for yourselves because TikTok does not want you to see this for whatever reason, but I'm gonna let you see it. And they muted my story. People in the comments, why do you think a map from 1892 is accurate? Why do I think that the Gleason's map that shows an ice wall is accurate? Because the United Nations thinks it's accurate. They use it as their logo. The World Health Organization thinks it's accurate. They use it in their logo. And if you didn't know, the World Health Organization is trying to discuss a global pandemic treaty. These are the motherfuckers with power. These are the motherfuckers that can make shit happen that can affect your life. I don't think you guys understand what global means. It means the whole world. Not just America, not just Europe, not just Canada, or wherever you live, the whole world. They are making decisions for the world. And the people that are making these decisions have the Gleason's map in their logo. What does that tell you? I understand it's hard to be open-minded to all of this because we've all been taught that the world is a certain way, that we live on a globe, but you have to ask questions. I just want to show you guys something really funny. And to top it all off, why not just add a little bit of Masonic symbolism into the picture? You know, we got the sun, the moon, underneath the dome. But no, all those cultures were wrong. Even though they had technology back then that was way more advanced than us, that they could do things we can't do to this day, but yet they were still dumb enough not to know what the earth was really looking like. So this is what the earth really looks like. But wait, there's more. That isn't actually a photograph of earth but it's a sophisticated visualization. None of the satellites are far away enough to see a full hemisphere. And the data was stitched together and then modified in Photoshop. And then he admits there are numerous fakeries in his image. But yet, this is what Earth looks like. 
after I read this comment, guess what I saw? So naturally, this sign from the universe told me that I need to dig deeper. So our good old trusted friend Google told me that NASA was founded by Dwight D. Eisenhower. I'm not buying it. And by the way, you should do all your research on DuckDuckGo, not Google. So when I type in who is the real creator of NASA, Werner Von Braun pops up. The same name that I saw while walking today. So upon further research, I discovered that Von Braun was cool with Walt Disney. They actually worked together on several projects. And Walt Disney has his own rabbit hole of conspiracy theories, okay? A bam. But what really stood out to me was that on Werner Von Braun's gravestone, he had the Bible verse Psalms 19, 1. The heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament sheweth his handiwork. I'm telling you, we're in a dome right there. And there's so many other domes. And Walt Disney knows it too. They're just like throwing it in our faces, y'all. So at this point, we can agree that NASA was founded on BS. Space isn't real. This is an actual photo from space on the NASA website. Where are the stars? You can't tell me this doesn't look fake. Like I could have made this in Photoshop, honestly. So the explanation of why there is no stars in the pictures is that the astronauts had to bump the exposure way down to be able to capture the lunar surface or their spacesuits. So being the detective that I am, I decided to try it out. And I took a picture of me with stars in the background and tried to, you know, bump the exposure and contrast and all that down to see if the stars would disappear. And I didn't get nothing but like this. So like, I can still see the stars. What? And a lot of you might be curious, why do I care so much, you know, about this? Why do I want to expose NASA so much and expose that space isn't real? I'll tell you why. My biological father actually worked for NASA. You can search this up yourself. So I'm like really intrigued and inclined to learn more about what my dad really was helping before he died. And this is just another weird observation. 44.9% of NASA's budget is spent on human space flight. Who the fuck are they sending up to space? I haven't seen anyone sent to space in years. It says NASA spends its money on Earth, not in space. What? It's fake. Wake up, people, and stay safe. Oh, I love this question. What do I think about the new photos released by NASA? So you guys were clowning me in my other video because of the stars that I chose to use. But tell me this. This is released photo from NASA. Do the stars not look similar? These look fake as fuck. And you mean to tell me this is what space looks like? Look at the stars. It's the same shit. They want us to think this is real. This is really up there. This. That's the same shit I posted. These stars look fake as fuck. This is fake. They just released these photos, you guys. Like, seriously, this is supposed to be a zoom in on the stars. It looks like water ripples. This just looks like water above the firm moment. We're in a dome. Space isn't real. NASA is bullshit. And if they could take pictures of like space mountains or whatever the fuck this is, why can't they show us a real picture of Earth? Just turn the camera around and show us Earth. 